Hello and welcome back to Dango's Outdoors YouTube channel. As I always say, if you're new around here and you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. I do videos most Sunday mornings, <laughs> so that's what you get in return. Now I'm out doing a bit of lure fishing today. It's something that I have been really getting into. And I've actually gone and got myself, well, I say got myself, a rod was a present. But I've got a whole new setup to use and kind of goes against what I said when I first started <laughs> getting into lure fishing. I was like, oh, I'll be happy using my old rod and reel here. I'm not going to do it that much. Just something to fill the gaps. Well, the carp fishing's not on like today. My, my gravel pit's closed. So yeah, this old setup was what I was using and it did me, did me proud. Got some good perch up to, um, I think it's £2.12 or £2.14, something like that. And um, yeah, some decent pike and things as well. Also a roach actually, thinking about it. I caught a roach on a lure. Got my braid. <laughs> but it's not up to it really for the small kind of canal perch fishing I want to be doing. So I've gone out and I've got a new setup, which I'll, uh, I'll talk through later. And I am really, really excited to use it. I haven't been this excited to use a, a new bit of fishing gear since I was probably about, you know, 11, 12 years old when you get that new rod for Christmas or something and you go out in a freezing cold and you're blank anyway, but wasn't it fun just to use your new, <laughs> your new setup? So there we go, that's the trace tied on. Again, we'll talk about the kind of terminal tackle and the lures and things as we go. But for now, I'm just gonna get set up, put you guys on my chest rig, and hopefully we'll bump into some perch, maybe a pike or two. I got a decent pike down here last time. And yeah, we'll just enjoy ourselves. It's about half two now. I can fish, well, as long as I want, because I've already cooked tea, so Soph's not bothered. <laughs> She's got my, my famous meatballs, hey my famous meatballs. <laughs> She's got that to, to chow down on while I'm not there. So yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right, I'm gonna change this lure out and then we'll get on it. Here we go. Let's, <laughs> let's get on it. Got a lovely afternoon, potentially a bit of evening ahead of us. And apologies to those who watched the last lure fishing video because I am basically just gonna repeat that session. What I wanna do is get a, a real gauge of is this new rod actually gonna make a difference? I think it will, but we'll find out. And, you know, to do a proper scientific test, you've gotta got isolate them variables, haven't you? So we're gonna try and fish the same stretch in a similar way, in quite similar conditions as well, actually, and hope we get better results. So here's me, here's me first cast with my new, new rod and reel combo. A lot of weed and stuff about, so. Yeah, I might have to move further up where it's a bit clearer. Well, let's just go. Oh, ho, ho. Right on the edge of that weed. Oh my God. Already. So I'll try and stand where I shield you from the wind. Already that lure, I can feel it a hundred times better. Wow, this is so... Wow, this is so responsive. Two gram jig head, and I can properly feel it. I can, I can work it much slower. And this is what everyone's recommendation is when you're after perching that, is just really slow it down. Sputs on it. Work that margin. I think something just swirled down there. Certainly when I pulled up a fish, a fish hit something near the bridge.
Oh my god, it casts well with a, a light jig. And we've got one! Oh yes! Already we've got a better average than before. And I felt every bit of that. There it is. My first fish on my new rod. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny perch. And that is actually what I'm really interested in is catching lots of little fish. And what's, what is interesting, I'm pretty sure it's my smallest lure caught fish. And oh, and I felt it all because of a new setup. Yeah, let's do that again. What, three, four casts in? Bosh. Thank you to everyone, especially Sophie who bought me this rod. But to Nick, Colin who I met on the bank, a couple of other guys who helped me out, recommended me some good gear. This is a test of the new light braid. This is what I was worried about when you get into that lump of wood, can it pull it out? It's doing well so far. Doing everyone a favor getting rid of this. Let me call that a pass, and the hook's still sharp. <laughs> Let's go again. There's a massive bream underneath me. Now bream will take lures, especially if they think about spawning. Ah, oh, he's just gone. Just out here. Wow. That's a good bream, that was like a Five, six pound bream. Well, maybe four. <laughs> but yeah, good, good. Good sized fish. <laughs> there we go. The micro pack again. I wonder if I can get this out without needing my forceps. Sorry, again, I turned the camera off because... Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's really windy down here. This guy's going to have to get the Alton Towers release. Yeah, he's good. Off he goes. <laughs> That's cool. That's two fish and my first pike. I'm a new, new, uh, new setup here. Let's keep going. Hey. <laughs> Not gonna believe me, or maybe you will, but a trout just jumped out just over here. An actual trout in the canal. I'm not gonna be able to stand on that little perch there. Nope, I'm gonna have to do some back up here, let's not get silly. Well hey, three species would be cool. Finally another one. This was my last cast in this swim, and it's happened. Yeah. There we go. So two perch and a micro pike. Let's see if we give this one a bit more of a graceful release. Oh. There you go, mate. <laughs> Should say, if they're any bigger, I'd put them in the net and drop them, drop them down. But them little ones, they can take uh, take the Tom Daly release. <laughs> Just 
think we're going to settle there. Bass a fish, bass a fish. Oh my god, this could be what we're after. This could be the big perch we're after. Get the net in position. I think it is. I think this is what we want today. Oh my god, yes, and we got it on film. Come on. Yep, that's a good perch. Slacking everything off. Oh my god. Oh jeez, it's a good perch. That's exactly what we came for. Loosen up everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, let's get that net in. Let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> After a couple of bites from a couple of small ones. There she blows, that ain't a small perch. Yes. Now I am going to weigh this fish. It's no PB. And it's certainly not a huge perch, but that's a cracker. And I feel like with big fish you should always almost disrespectful not to weigh them when, when they look like that. I think we're looking at pound, pound and a half, something like that. Let's find out. <laughs> That's awesome, I'm a new setup. <laughs> well, pretty much bang on a pound and a half. That is really cool. That is, yeah. Nice. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. Good perch. <laughs> that's the one. That's awesome. There's a few people going by congratulating me. Yeah, one pound eight. That'll do on my little jig. On my new setup. Yeah. Right, a few pictures of this one. And we'll get it back. So I'll just walk this guy a bit further up the bank. And put him back in the net. Pound that perch. Well, I'll take that all day long. It's massive in the water. Well, all right, we are back in the game. Fortunately, it took quite a while to get back to fishing there. One of the downsides of fishing and filming is that by the time you've got your, your cameras away and all the different attachments and that, probably 15, 20 minutes has passed. Uh, which is one of the reasons I always bring uh, more fish care equipment than perhaps is needed because I'm very conscious of the fact that I might not be as hands-on as I would perhaps like to be. So it is good just to let the fish rest in the net while I get everything sorted. And then I can just show you the fish and everything in one one maneuver but yeah i did get a couple of comments on the last video like <laughs> someone of you who said what's that suitcase hanging off the end of your landing net well that's my own hooking mat and i will uh i'll never compromise on fish care bring the bring the big mat even for these smaller species because you never know like last time i was here i caught a four or five pound pike something like that and it did fill that that landing net you know it's my my kind of my medium landing net that I take for pretty much everything other than big, big carp fishing on, and big pike, big, big pike fishing, I should say. Yeah, that's a, that's a map that I bring and does a job. But we'll just work this area again. Perch being a, a shoal fish, you just, you just never know. I'm sure if something just went by. I don't know if they were perch. There are fish active today, I think. For all the, the silver fish and things, it's getting close to spawning time. So they're active and the mayfly are hatching as well. <laughs> What am I even saying? Instead of getting through these lilies, so. 
flush. There we go. Well, we're racking up the count now. What's that? Three little ones. Three little ones. A big one and a little pike. In fact, what made me stop and cast here was that I saw a little pike close in. Yeah, brilliant. Now I am going to use the net this time because uh, it's a little bit high here. So let's lay the rod on there. Pop him in. Get it back. Ooh. Got a micro fish on here, that's for sure. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Whee. Well, that brings up a total of little wasps to um, four, I think. Ooh. Get right out of there. Little lob back. If I shield you from the wind, you can probably see I've changed lures. I've gone, I've gone more subtle, this kind of more natural colour. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I, uh, I got stuck on the vegetation, had to pull for a break, and I was worried about whether or not this gear would be strong, but it was actually the hook that broke. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we can trust the cell. Right, since we caught one. Let's film this next cast. See if uh, there's more little guys home. Get a real good sized perch, which came out of the margins here. Yeah, you know, pound and a half plus. So I think it's definitely worth a dozen casts here. Two big perch in one day. Two big perch in one day. That one was right at my feet. I wish I filmed that. <laughs> Saw him come in and I drop, dropped it back down and he uh, took it on a drop. Spike it here. <laughs> nice. sat on a bench now just taking a few minutes out and it's been ages since I've caught a fish probably two three hours something like that and uh, any any of the locals will will recognize this and know that I've gone really far actually I put in the mileage today if you recognize the spots and I've not caught a fish since pretty much fishing down this way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really cover this area back to the car and hope that maybe now the sun's dipping we'll get another big perch or something like that. I've caught seven fish. I would love to make it 10. It's been ages since I caught, you know, double figures of fish. That would be, that would be brilliant. But let's do it. Let's talk about the setup. So we did the rod before uh, on the last video. It is a Corum ZT, six foot eight, one to 10 gram rod. And it is, wow, it is so much more responsive than my last setup. I don't really have a lot to compare it to, but yeah, I can already tell that this is gonna catch me more fish. That first spot when I had those few little jigs and I felt that wrap of that perch, amazing. I don't think I would have really felt that with my last rod until the fish was on. So yeah, very impressed by it. 
the reel. Now, uh, when I spoke to Nick what rod to use, he, uh, he recommended a couple of Coram ones, but I've got Shimano reels on nearly all my setups, so that's kind of what I had to go with. And I wanted to spend around 50 quid, I thought was reasonable for the amount I'm gonna use it, and I do want something decent. And in my experience, once you spend about 50 quid on a fishing reel, you, you get something that's gonna last longer. Below 50 quid, yeah, it, a bit sketchy. There's, that seems to be a kind of a threshold. So I found this, it's a Shimano Sahara. 2500 size and I love it it is a cracking little reel it's actually a, a 70 quid reel but I went on eBay and this guy was on there for 55 so a little bit over budget but yeah I love the look of it and so far it has responded really well uh, I need to get used to the fact that it's not got a backwind uh, apparently Shimano are making more reels without backwinds anymore which is all right because I tend to use a drag most of the time anyway but the times I do use the backwind is when I'm like reaching for the lure, I tend to flick it over and let it backwind down to me. But I'm getting used to that. But yeah, stunning little, little, uh, there's a tree up there. <laughs> stunning little reel, matches the rod well. The rod is really nice, you know, it's very understated, brilliant. Now for line, I wanted a really fine braid. I did a lot of Googling and it seems like the Daiwa J braid is, comes highly recommended. So that's what I went with. This is the um, 0 0.06, which is nine pounds and i went with the green one now i know a lot of people say that when you lure fishing shoes a, a very bright braid then you can you can see where it is in the water but i was just a little bit worried about the visibility of that because i do tend to tie the braid straight to a little trace um yeah i know a lot of people use fluorocarbon leaders but you've seen the amount of pike i catch when i'm lure fishing so i just i can't bring myself to not have that little trace on so i wanted something you know a little bit subtler than a bright line and let's face it it's already <laughs> you know got a bit brighter in the water there and it's kind of brightish anyway and doesn't seem to have put the fish off at all so that's the new setup i am loving it i've caught basically twice as many fish as i did last time i fished here with my other setup but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put on a brighter lure go over the same area now the sun's dipping Fingers crossed, we'll catch either three more fish or one more big fish. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> also, to have a drink and a bit of water myself. A drink and a bit of water. Yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's the bright allure, something I've caught on before. All the lures I've used today have been these spiky shads. I'm, I'm really into them, they seem to be pretty much the only little jig I catch on and that's mainly what I've been doing is just jigging sorry about the wind just casting out letting it sink just giving it some little hops back and we're back at the scene of the crime we're back where we caught that big perch and the area is nice and rested maybe there's still some of us here oh god yeah I can see that bright lure coming back a little bit murkier down here Hopefully, fish can see that. They'll just nail it. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it a day there. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Man, I was very optimistic thinking I was gonna get three more fish or at least one big one before I got back to the car, but whatever. We've had a great day. So that's me all packed up in the gear, back in the motor. Yeah, pretty happy with how today went to catch seven fish and one of them being a pretty decent perch. I am well happy with that. 
Uh, I do think I've got some distance to go before I'm better at lure fishing. You know, there, there's so many instances there where I sort of had one on and then it was off straight away and I wonder if there's more I could do, maybe I could react quicker, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna maybe think of getting some, some new lures as well. I know I love those spiky shads, but perhaps there's, there's something else out there that could, could fill that gap. We'll, we'll have to see, but yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more to come. And yeah, if you're getting out there, hopefully you're catching some big fish too. Right, see you next time.